Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I wanted to go over something that I discussed about PayPal a few years ago as a result of Stripe being in the news. They think this is a very important thing to be thinking about when you have a business that accepts credit cards. And this is something that I don't think a lot of people know or understand until after the fact. In my life, I've found that there are two types of people. There are people that don't read fine print and there are people who lie about reading fine print. But most people don't read the fine print because they don't understand it. And when you have an 80-page contract in front of you, you have the choice of being able to run a business and get on with your life or spend the time to read the 80 pages and then try and Google the phrases in the 80 pages to understand what everything means. So I'd like to go over this because a lot of people are going to miss this. So this was in the news. It says Stripe's value jumps to $95 billion, becoming top U.S. startup. Now, Stripe is a company that allows you to process credit card transactions, and they have an amazing interface. I think that their interface is beautiful when you compare it to the, the garbage that PayPal has. Also, the technology that they use is considerably better. If you have a forum like, you know, vBulletin or Zen4 or something like that, and you have tried to do recurring subscription payments, you will find that PayPal uses outdated shit that often fails and double bills, all sorts of horror show nightmare crap, whereas Stripe just works. It's beautiful in that way. However, there are downsides that I think should be considered if you don't need the features that Stripe offers. And I think that the, the downsides that Stripe has are large enough to consider using alternative services, even if it doesn't affect you right now, because eventually this will send a message to the rest of the credit card processing and merchant services industry that it's okay to stick the tip in. And as I say, you never want to allow anyone to stick the tip in. Now, what the way merchant services works in general, just for those who don't understand, is if you want to pay me $1,100 to purchase an ultrasonic cleaner, there'll be two fees that typically get charged. The first fee is a flat rate transaction fee, and you know PayPal and Stripe, I believe, charge around $0.30. Cents. So regardless of whether you spend $5 with me or $5,000, there's a $0.30 cent fee. The second fee is a fee for based on the price of the transaction. And that's with PayPal and Stripe, I believe, 2.9%. So if you pay me $1,100 for an ultrasonic cleaner, there are two fees there. The first fee is the 2.9%, which I believe comes out to $31.90. And the second is the flat rate fee of $0.30, cents, which would come out to a total fee of $32.20. Now, let's say you buy the ultrasonic cleaner from me, but you realize that your coworker had already purchased this item, so you don't need it. You made a mistake. Now, usually what happens is if you call me up and say, hey, man, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, you know, my coworker already bought this. I don't need this. Can you refund me and cancel the order? What usually happens is I will get refunded the 2.9% fee, the $31.90, but I won't get fund, refunded the 30 cent fee, the, the flat fee. And, you know, again, not getting refunded the 30 cents, it sucks if you're dealing with a volume business, but it's not the end of the world. Not getting refunded the $31.90 that's painful on an $1,100 order. And that, that, that kind of stuff really does add up. Now, in the past, virtually all merchant services providers would refund you that higher percentage fee. So, you know, again, if someone spent $11,000 at your business and then you had to refund them, you wouldn't be stuck with a, you know, th over $300 fee with no profit. But what PayPal started doing and what I discussed in these two videos I did a while back, which I chose the worst possible moment to pause on over here. What I discussed in these two videos is that they are no longer refunding the 2.9% fee, even if you refund your customer. So if someone buys an ultrasonic cleaner for me for $1,100 and I have to refund them for whatever reason, I have to eat the $31.90 fee for a transaction where I have not taken any money and there's no profit. And I found this to be insane. What I did was I removed PayPal from as much of my business as possible and left it solely to the subscription part for which I could not find an alternative. The reason I did this is because I don't want them to get the idea that this is okay. Once one manufacturer, one vendor, one technological services company, once one financial services company is able to stick the tip in and get away with it, every company thinks that they can stick the tip in and get away with it. And again, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I don't want anybody thinking they can stick the tip in. It's not right. So what Stripe is doing is they also don't refund that 2.9% fee. So if you make a purchase from someone for $1,100, you notice, whoops, my bad, I you know made some sort of mistake, and you call them up and say, I'm so sorry, can I cancel my order? The merchant has to eat that $31.90 just because you changed your mind and wanted a refund. Now, I think that this is this is bullshit. This is asinine. This is garbage. And this is something that should not be happening. These financial services firms were making money 
hand over fist before this existed as a fee. And it just doesn't, like, I, I'm not keeping the money, but I still have to pay the fee. It's just, no, no, I'm not, I'm not accepting that. And I shouldn't have to accept it because other companies that offer merchant services don't do this. So I bank with Chase. I use Chase for merchant services. Chase has a horrible interface for their merchant services. It looks straight out of 1997. When If you have a chargeback in Chase and you want to figure out if you won the chargeback, I swear, it's, it's you, know, ever, you ever play the Indiana Jones game that came on floppy disks where it came with a book? That was a strategy guide, and it had this thing that it came with. It was a decoder, this red or brown decoder that you had to look through to read the strategy guide. That's what it feels like dealing with Chase Merchant Solutions. They're not the best with that, but they don't do that. Even Square, Square, which I've talked about in this channel in horrible terms in the past, will refund you, at least at the time that I use them, the 2.9% the fee if you refund the customer. There are many merchant service solutions that will refund you that fee if you refund the customer, but Stripe doesn't do that. And since their fee is as high as it is, I don't see any compelling reason for people to be using them when there are alternatives. So I contacted them recently and I showed them a couple of months of my stuff and I asked, you know, if there was any chance of getting a discount off of the 2.9% and 30, uh, 30 cent flat fee just because I had a fair amount of business. You know, I had a few months at some point where there was 150,000, 180,000, 200,000 and there were no chargebacks. So I remember PayPal used to offer you a discount if you had over $100,000 per month in business. Since I at one point got to the 200,000 point in gross credit card revenue for online and in store, I showed them that and they said, nah, this doesn't qualify for a discount at all. So whereas Chase is willing to give me between 2 to 2.1% and refund the fee when I refund the customer, Stripe said 2.9% plus 30% flat rate fee and no refunding the fee when you refund the customer. They must be doing something that I don't understand that's allowing them to grow at the rate that they are because I don't see why any business owner would want to go with a merchant services firm whereby when they make a refund, they lose a substantial amount of money. Again, if you're offering repairs that are, it's, it's not going to bankrupt you, but if you have to refund someone, a, you know, a three or $400 repair, like why do you want to be throwing away $10 here and there? If you're selling people a thousand to $10,000 worth of product and they call up five seconds after they make the order, why do you want to lose 30 to $300? It's just that you don't have to lose with any other vendor. It makes no sense to me. Now, what a lot of people have been saying in my comments, and what I'm sure I'll get in the comment section of this video by people who don't listen to the whole thing, is, well, wh why don't you just pass it on to the customer? The solution here is to pass it on to the customer. And that's absolute horseshit, because if I pass that fee on to my customer, my customer is going to leave me a one-star review because they're not used to this. You have to understand, throughout the 90s, throughout the 2000s, throughout the 2010s, this did not exist. So customers are not used to there being a restocking fee when there's not even something to restock. Again, if you buy an item, you use that item, you buy a mouse and you get your sweaty Cheeto, you know, Cheeto Dorito covered paws on it and return it, they, they're going to charge you a restocking fee. If you buy something and you cancel the order 10 seconds later, people don't expect there to be a restocking fee where they're going to pay 30 to to $100 just because they canceled an order. So they're going to leave you a one-star review for that because this is not something that they were used to. But you know who's not going to get a one star? Amazon. Large companies. Because the large companies that are going to be able to do their own merchant services in-house are not going to be the ones that pay these fees. As time goes on, if Stripe gets away with it and PayPal gets away with it, then more and more companies that service small businesses like mine will decide that we're just not going to refund the fee either. Meaning that the large companies like Amazon and Walmart are going to be the only companies left that are able to cancel orders for customers without charging them a restocking fee. If we allow this to continue, if we allow Stripe and PayPal to do what they're doing and continue to utilize their platforms and services, we are slowly moving towards a world where the only players that are going to be able to um, offer instant order cancellation without a fee are going to be the Amazons and the Walmarts while the small businesses get screwed and get bad reviews. As the small businesses get worse reviews and the larger businesses get better ones, they are going to get more of the business. The small businesses are going to die. And this is, you know, again, when you, in, in the times of COVID where small businesses are dying faster than ever, I think this is something to be cognizant of. You may think this is an overreaction. This is only one thing people are not going to complain. You, you, you haven't dealt with customer service. People complain over everything. And if someone makes an order for a thousand bucks and asks for a cancellation because they made a mistake 10 seconds later and they get a $30, $30 fee, they're going to be pissed. Passing this on to the customer is going to suck. 
If you absorb the fee, that means that you need to charge more money than Amazon and Walmart, which again, being able to compete with Amazon and Walmart as a small business right now, that's that's a difficult thing to do. Adding a fee that they don't have to pay is not making things any easier. And I know another thing that people are going to say in the comment section, which is, well, it costs them money to run a business. Why should they be refunding you the fee when they paid for that transaction? The cost of running a merchant services business and a financial services business, for the most part, is going to be the cost of server, computational time, bandwidth. Again, we're, we're not using abacuses. This is not the, you know, this is not the 1600s. This is 2021. To be clear here, I'm talking about the actual cost of providing the refund. I'm not talking about the actual cost of setting up the infrastructure, which is something that was done a long time before this fee ever existed. So there was no, none of this BS, we don't refund the fee when you refund the customer in 2002. There was none of this BS in 2012. But for some reason in 2021, when bandwidth and computational time is at an all-time low in my lifetime, is when this fee gets introduced. It doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. It's a way of just making more money, of being able to return more profits than you did last year by taking something that we all use to just accept as standard and take it away. And again, as long as there are competitors to these companies that offer compelling products and services in the financial and merchant services industries that don't charge this fee, I see no reason to accept this fee as standard. And I'm not going to accept it as standard. As I say, companies that do this, PayPal and companies like PayPal and Stripe, they used to get, you know, fifty to $150,000 a month in merchant services processing for my business. And then I reduced it to the two to $4,000 that we get from the forum and other areas where I deal with subscription-based payments. And as I find other companies that don't charge this fee for that, I'm going to get rid of them there too. Again, I can't get rid of them 100%, but I got rid of them for a good 99% of my business on principle. I, I don't want to accept this as standard. I don't want to, you know, five or 10 years from now deal with a world where the only people who are allowed to not charge a restocking fee while not losing money are Amazon and Walmart. Screw that. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I've actually seen some of the management at Stripe post on Y Combinator before. They've engaged with people back and forth. And I genuinely appreciate the fact that they are at that, you know, arm's length reach in that way that you'll just never find with companies like PayPal or Chase. I really do appreciate that. But it's just one of those things where I see it on the news. One of the, you know, they're one of the top rated startups as a credit card company that has started to stick the tip in and make it an accepted norm that you don't get refunded the fee when you refund the customer. It's just... Not cool with it. Just not cool with it. Let me know what you think. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.